Thanks for watching the world's top DAW review for music producers. In this video, we will review all of the digital audio workstations that are in use, also known as a DAW or DAW. And this is uh, produced by David Oler here at OHLR Music. Now, if you listen to the presentation and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you would like a copy of these slides, just send us an email to ohlrmusic at gmail.com and we'll be happy to send you the slide deck for your reference. Now, it goes without saying that when you're on the internet, just be careful. There's a lot of malicious software out there. You'll want to make sure you go to the official company websites only. Most of you already know this if you're watching this video, but it helps to just kind of quickly recap that a DAW or digital audio work station is the software that you use to record, edit, mix, and produce audio. And this can function as a central interface to all of your physical hardware, uh, such as MIDI instruments, keyboards, controllers, as well as virtual instruments. And a DAW can be used as your own personal recording studio. And with today's very fast multi-core CPUs and solid state drives and modern software development techniques, it really has replaced the need for traditional recording studio equipment that in the past cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So a DAW is used to convert the sounds from analog, either from a microphone or an instrument to a digital or a computer format. And then once you have this recorded analog, you can edit and sequence the audio files. And this allows you to program and record uh, music instruments as well to control and generate virtual instruments and sounds, often uh, used as a VST or other formats. You can create automations that are typically called envelopes. And then you can edit and mix the final production. So musicians, producers, DJs, recording engineers, and sound engineers are all common users of DAWs. DAWs can be used to produce professional quality music, songs. They're used in uh, cinema and TV soundtracks, speech and radio podcasts, and more. And most DAWs are produced by independent software companies either headquartered in the United States or Europe, mostly Germany, and some very large companies as well, Apple, Adobe, and Yamaha. Here at OHLR Music, we're going to provide with you the most comprehensive review of every single DAW in 2020. So there's a total of 39, and so let's get to it. Acoustica Inc. is the makers of Mixcraft Pro Studio. They're in Yosemite Valley, California. It's a great little company, really friendly customer service with over a dozen employees, and it's really designed for musicians to be easy to use. It is a Windows PC only version, and the recording studio is $99. Right now they're running a sale on their website for $75, or you can get the full Pro Studio for $199, sale $149, and that is on Acoustica.com. Ableton Live was developed in Berlin, Germany, and they've been around since 2001. Ableton is one of the most widely used DAWs worldwide with massive ecosystem of VSTs and sounds, both from Ableton and third party. And it's available for Mac OS and Windows. And because it has been available for years on a Mac OS, it's a very stable. And it's a different approach than most DAWs because there's an emphasis of integration with the musician, recording, and performance. So that's why there are two different methods of use. You either go into an arrangement view or a session view. And either one allows easy recording, sequencing, and performance modes. Now, Ableton also makes hardware. The Push to Controller instrument is integrated for native um, integration with Ableton Live 10. And there's very strong support. Ableton has over 300 employees that are dedicated to supporting musicians. You can get started with the intro version for $99. The standard license is $499. And the full suite with all the available instruments and sounds is $774. Ableton.com. Apple GarageBand was developed by Apple, but actually it was a precursor project, product, sorry, Logic Express uh, or Magic originally de developed in Hamburg, Germany. Now there is a limited iOS edition available for free with the purchase of an iPhone or iPad, or you get the Mac OS only version free from the App Store if you own Apple hardware. It uses Apple's very clean but limited user interface. This is perhaps the best free DAW for beginners. 
Uh, it's very simple and clean. Once you master GarageBand, it's very easy to transition to Apple Logic Pro. And this is a free software, and it's uh, apple.com. Apple Logic Pro 10 is also developed by Apple out of Cupertino, California. And this also had its origins in the eMagic software from Hamburg, Germany. And Apple acquired this company and redesigned it as Logic Studio. Logic Pro has a very easy transition from GarageBand, as mentioned. You basically just open up Logic Pro, turn on all advanced features and preferences, and then you can import all your GarageBand projects. Now, there are some users in TV and film industry, and these are crossover users from the Final Cut Pro video editing software. And you're going to get good product support from Apple, but a somewhat limited platform and ecosystem. The backend legacy instruments badly need updating. And it is a Mac OS only, and you can go with the 90-day free trial. And there are free upgrades included, but it is a $199 cost. However, you can buy Final Cut and Logic Pro in an education bundle for $199. The way you do that is you search on apple.com for Apple Education Bundle and buy that bundle for $199. Once you make that purchase, Apple is going to send you an email in a couple of days. You use that redemption code to redeem your software in the App Store. So go to apple.com. Adobe Audition CC was formerly known as Cool Edit Pro. Adobe is an $11 billion software company. A lot of users in the film and TV industry who also use Premiere Pro. Full support on Windows PC and Mac OS. This is a subscription model, which means you always have the latest updates. It can get expensive unless you're using other Adobe products for other uh, range of use, including desktop publishing, marketing, or film editing. $20.99 a month subscription, or the full Adobe Creative Cloud includes $52.99. If you're using Photoshop, uh, Premiere, or other editing software, then perhaps you can use the bundle. Adobe.com is their website. Ardor is an open source uh, version using the GNU general public license. There are quite a few open source products out there. Just understand that open source means it's free. It's developed by the community. It has some features, but don't expect all of the latest features. If you're on a tight budget and you just want to get started with some DAWs, then Open source is a great way to kind of get your hands on it and to get some experience. There is unlimited support um, for multi-channel tracks and lots of uh, uh, third-party plugins in the Ardor ecosystem. So go to ardor.org. Audacity is another large open source project, uh, not officially supported on Mac OS Catalina yet, and you have to wait for the community to come up with updates. It is probably the most popular free and open source DAW. Good documentation support and the latest version 2.3.3. And they do have Windows, Mac OS, GNU, Linux versions. Go to audacityteam.org for more info. Avid Technology Pro Tools. Now this company is out of Burlington, Massachusetts. The company originally started in Digit Design in Berkeley, California. And this is one of the perhaps one of the first software applications developed to revolutionize the recording studio and the industry at large. It is perhaps the industry standard for professional recording studios, and it offers highly featured multi-track recording. There are Windows and Mac OS versions. The latest version is numbered by the year 2020. There is a Pro Tools free, first free version. It, you're gonna find that with some keyboards and other OEM products as a free bundle but really they want you to step up to Pro Tools. Uh, the full version is $29.99 a month. If you want Ultimate, that's $79.99 a month. Now, as the most expensive DAW, the highest subscription cost is beyond the reach of most independent and small music producers, but there is a large ecosystem for training, third-party plugins, and if you're professionally employed in the industry, chances are you're going to uh, work with Pro Tools. Uh, to an extent, Avid has not kept up with innovation, and they have continue to lose a lot of their market share to other DAWs, especially Ableton Live and FL Studio. Go to avid.com for more info. Band Lab Cakewalk is the latest iteration of what was Cakewalk Sonar. Now, Cakewalk was purchased by Gibson Brands. However, through their bankruptcy, the software intellectual property 
has been relaunched as Cakewalk by Band Lab. Now, there was previously three editions available, Platinum, Studio, and Artist, and this is a Windows PC only. As for now, it looks like this Band Lab software is offering Cakewalk free with the ability to purchase loot packs and other hardware accessories. It'll be interesting to see how they are able to stay in business and monetize uh, this time. But go to cakewalk.com and bandlab.com for more info. Bitwig is another uh, software company out of Berlin, Germany. Some former Ableton software engineers founded this company. Bitwig Studio is really designed to work as an instrument for live performances as well as a tool for composing, recording, arranging, mixing, and mastering. It's got Mac OS Windows and Ubuntu Linux version, and there is a 16-track version for $99, or the full Bitwig Studio is $399. Go to bitwig.com. Bremer's Audio Design are the makers of Multi-Track Studio. This software is based in the Netherlands. It supports Windows, Mac OS, and iPad. The latest version is 9.6. It is a small company with limited support, and they offer a $69 standard version, or a pro $119 version. Go to multitrackstudio.com for more details. Cocos Reaper was founded in 2004 in New York. Formerly, they called it the Rapid Environment for Audio Production, Engineering, and Recording. Uh, that's a mouthful, so it's easier to say Reaper. It is a very small company with limited support. They offer a discounted license for 60, a commercial license for 225. And it's been around for a while. There are some loyal users of, of Reaper. Go to reaper.fm or cocos.com for more details. Harrison Consoles is based out of Nashville, Tennessee since 1975. They make mix bucks bus software, and they're also a manufacturer of the large format pro audio mixing consoles you're going to see in the broadcasting markets as well as in music studios. So they're very aptly located in Nashville, Tennessee. It is a small music focused company with over 10 employees. They have a free demo version, but you'll want to download the Mixbus $79 paid version or go to the full Mixbus 32C version for $349. So more details on harrisonconsoles.com. Image Line Software out of Ghent, Belgium, was founded in 1992, and they are the makers of FL Studio. This was originally called Fruity Loop, so that's how we got FL. And this is one of the most widely used DAWs worldwide. There's a massive ecosystem of VSTs and sounds, both from FL Studio and third party. The company jumped from version 12 to 20, and that was in celebration of 20 years and 2020. They have good product support with around 50 employees and free lifetime upgrades, so that's how they are able to bring a lot of loyalty in. It is a solid DAW, but it needs a professional redesign. The icons are still white, kind of outdated. They need a better toolbar layout that matches the workflow, and they need to do a better job of integrating plug-in packs with one-click buttons for downloads because it can take quite a while to figure out the additional software that you're entitled to you know, I have the all plugins bundle, $8.99, and I'm still trying to figure out how to find all the different plugins and all the different sounds and how to get it integrated. It's it's quite a lot of labor intensive that ought to be automated with simple one click like Ableton does. And they ought to also further develop a full Mac OS modern integration. It's a bit kludgy on Mac OS, a little more stable on Windows. But it is uh, very popular. Um, it can get very confusing with all the layers and pop-ups and all the feature additions. Uh, so a, a solid DAW, but with a complete redesign, they would really set the uh, the next standard in the industry. There are Windows, Mac OS, uh, newer versions, and, and then the iOS mobile edition. You can start out with Fruity Edition for 99 to really get a fully functioning product you need the producer edition for $199 there is a signature edition with more instruments for $299 and the all plugins bundle is $899 uh, image line image line.com is where you need to go for more details LMMS is formerly Linux Multimedia Studio this is one of those free and open source products it's available for Linux OpenBSD Mac OS and Windows they do have extensive documentation and training 
but as an open source product, it will be fairly limited, but it is free. Go to lmms.io or llms.sorge.net for more details. Magic Software makes Acid Pro. This was originally a Sonic Foundry product. Then Sony had it for a while. Then it disappeared for 10 years. Then it just kind of reemerged out of nowhere. Uh, Magic has a very fragmented DAW strategy, and they really need to integrate their various DAWs into one solution. The latest version of Acid Pro is 10. This is one of the few DAWs offered as either a single purchase or monthly subscription. So there is some flexibility from Magic in terms of licensing. You can either buy Acid Pro for $199, the Pro Suite for $399, or you could buy Pro 365 as a subscription for $999 a month. Go to magic.net for more details. Magic Software also makes Acid Music Studio, and they're based out of Berlin, Germany. Again, this software was formerly owned by Sony. It went through various ownership, and it was designed for beginners and consumers. Magic Music Studio appears to be mainly a consumer product, and there is a free download, um, but it is Windows PC only, latest version 11. Samplitude Music Studio is another DAW by Magic Software. This came out originally on Amiga. It's been around forever, and it has a bit of a different editing concept allowing for what they call object-oriented editing. And again, we'd like to see Magic integrate their products into one solution. SoundForge is yet another DAW uh, available from Magic Software. This is really geared towards the advanced and professional producers. The latest version is 14 on Windows PC, Mac OS. And again, we like the flexibility of their software licensing model. You can get the Pro Suite for $599, or you can buy the Pro version uh, for $14.99, or the Pro Suite for $26.99, as well as the basic license, uh, SoundForge Pro is $399. Now we are halfway, about halfway through our list of uh, DAWs, so hopefully uh, stay, stay with me, bear with me here, we're getting through it. DP, or Digital Performer, is from Motu. Originally, Motu meant Mark of the Unicorn, and they're based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, been around for quite a while. The Mac OS and PC are both supported. Latest version is 10, and they are a strong customer support and focus company with around 50 employees. They also make audio, video, and MIDI interfaces, virtual instruments, and other hardware. So they have a large uh, ecosystem of software and some hardware accessories. And you can buy DP10 for $499. Go to motu.com for more details. Muse is another one of those Linux open source products in development since 2003. They have audio MIDI sequencing with editing and recording capabilities. It is free. Um, as free software, it is developed by the community. Uh, Support can be limited, as well as new features. You go to sourceforge.net slash projects slash lmuse or muse-sequencer.github.io for more details. MuTools MuLab is a small software application with a Windows and a Mac OS version. There is a MuLab 8 user key, 69 euros, and the Mux modular is 68 euros. Both can be purchased for 99 euros. The MUX modular can also be plugged into other um, host DAWs as well. So go to mutools.com for more details. N-Track software is developed in Rome, Italy. They offer the N-Track Studio, both for Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS version. Their latest version is 9, the standard is 69, extended 139, and the suite is 179. They have a simple, clean interface with uh, different platform support for mobile and easy uh, transition from mobile to uh, desktop. Native Instruments is a large company out of Berlin, Germany. They offer the Native Instruments machine. It's really designed with Native Instruments hardware controller integration. The latest software version is 2, which includes the complete select software bundle. And this machine product Rather than using it as a standalone DAW, a lot of people like to use it as an instrument inside another DAW. The editing can be uh, not as seamless as some of the other DAWs. But as in terms of a library of sound, in terms of instrumentation, 
and ease of use. Uh, this happens to be one of the largest instrument and sound libraries available in the complete package uh, used by many music producers. You can get this as a single hardware and software bundle purchase for $649. Go to native-instruments.com for more details. PreSonus Audio Electronics was founded in 1995 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They're still down in Louisiana. They offer the Studio One product, and they were one of the early pioneers of DAWs. The, their precursor was the, the Crystal Audio Engine. There is strong integration with other hardware made by PreSonus, including uh, mixers, mixing systems and audio interfaces. So they do not only software, but some hardware as well. They support a Windows PC and Mac OS. Over 100 employees dedicated in the music business. So they have very good product support. The Prime Free Studio One is no cost. You can get Studio One Artist Edition for $99. Their website shows a sale today for now for $69 or the Studio One Professional 399 shows a sale of 297 right now on their website. Go to presonus.com for more details. Q Tractor is another open source product. This is designed for GNU Linux and it is written with the QT framework and it has very strong integration with the Jack Audio Connection Kit or Jack for audio as well as Alza or Advanced Linux Sound Architecture for MIDI. And in terms of the open source products, this is one of the better uh, modern interfaces that I've seen out there. The latest release is 2020-03-28. Go to qtractor.com or sourceforge.net slash projects slash qtractor. Reason Studios is based in Stockholm, Sweden. They were formerly known as Propellerhead Record, they're now known as Reason. The latest version is 11. They do have strong user support with approximately 50 employees. They offer the intro version with 11 instruments for $99, or the standard has 17 instruments, $399, or the suite has 28 instruments for $599. Go to reasonstudios.com for more information. Renoise was designed in Berlin, Germany. It Records everything in a tractor grid from top to bottom, hexadecimal in kind of a vertical. It's kind of different, kind of different. It is available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. The latest version is 3.2, and a full license is $75 US or 68 euro. Or you can also get their third party plug in instrument for $65 US, $58 or 58 euros. Sorry. Renoise.com is their website. Black Magic Design is out of Osaka, Japan, and they make the DaVinci Resolve product. Now, they're very popular with cinema and broadcast professionals. They have integration of 8K editing with audio post production in their latest version 16. They also make a line of professional hardware control panel panels, so there's complete integration there. Also, they design professional cameras, broadcast equipment, Fairlight mixing consoles, so it's more of a professional ecosystem of hardware and software. They do offer DaVinci Resolve version 16 for free, or you can buy the full Resolve Studio for $299. Go to blackmagicdesign.com for more details. Rose Garden Music, not quite sure if I wanted to include this as a DAW, it is a free open source application. It runs on Linux and the latest version is 19.12. It's good for music notation and MIDI sequencing. It's a little bit more limited in terms of editing capabilities. It was written by Andy Green at University of Bath in England. And you can go to rosegardenmusic.com for more details. RML Labs Saw Studio. Not sure if we should include this as well. It was developed by Bob Lentini out of Las Vegas, formerly called Software Audio Workshop. When you go to their website, however, it looks like the product hasn't really been updated much since 2011, and their address is a UPS store mailbox. However, they're still taking orders if someone wants to buy it, although the online store doesn't seem to work or there's no links to it. So we may not include this in future editions, but anyways, for now, we included it. SAW or Saw Studio, Saw Studio Lite, Saw Studio Basic are the three versions available. SawStudio.com. 
Steinberg is another company that has a very fragmented DAW strategy today, but they've been around for many years, since 1984, based out of Hamburg, Germany. And they are a subsidiary of Yamaha. So they do have very strong employee support, over 100 employees at Steinberg and thousands of employees with Yamaha. Yamaha being one of the top world's makers of musical instruments, as well as pro audio and other things as well. Steinberg was one of those early pioneers of music production products, and they invented the VST standard. Cubase has been around many years, originally started on Commodore and then on Atari, has a very loyal following. Some film composers continue to use it. And there is good notation integration, and that's one of the reasons why they have uh, you know, traditional composers like the product. Steinberg has an annoying USB-E licensor process, um, but other than that, um, and if they can get a better strategy around their DAW and get all these great products integrated into one, that would be ideal. Elements is $103, Artist is $285, and the Pro version is $457. Go to steinberg.net for more details. Nuendo Live is another DAW offered by Steinberg. This came about from the uh, Nuage Nuendo acquisition, and there is tight integration with Yamaha. So Yamaha makes a line of pro audio gear, mixers, board, live recording equipment. The latest version is version 2, and they have very good uh, professional support with this product, but it, it is primarily designed to complement the Yamaha hardware. Go to steinberg.net for more detail. Spectra Layers is kind of an interesting DAW. They have integrated this new version of spectral data audio editing capabilities, and the latest version is version 6. But to me, this sounds like it should ought to be integrated into Cubase, for example, not really launched as its own separate DAW. Spectra Layers is available in several different pricing models. WaveLab is another DAW available from Steinberg, and the latest version is version 10. And this is really what they're targeting towards professional audio editing mastering. Uh, so a lot of post-production as well. And it requires that annoying USB-E licensor, um, but it really should be plugged in and integrated across the board with a seamless single DAW, in my opinion. The WaveLab Pro is licensed at $507.98. Go to steinberg.net for more details. Traction was originally developed by Julian Storr, and it was uh, owned by Mackie. Mackie makes hardware. They make Pro Audio. They make mixers. Then the software was later relaunched as a standalone company in 2013 as Traction. Windows, Mac OS, and Linux versions are supported. It's really designed as a single screen interface design concept. So they try to eliminate the need of pop-up windows. You're going to find this available as an OEM product. So if you buy some products from Behringer, from Mackie, and Roll, you're going to get a um, an OEM version for free. And they claim to be the fastest growing DAW there is a free version, there is a Pro Basic for $119, a Pro Standard for $259, and a Pro Extreme for $649. We have Traverse DAW. This is a open source free download. They're based out of the Netherlands, and it's good for beginners, but like all of the open source products, there are going to be uh, limitations, in this case, multi-tech Multi-track recording is limited. Traverse-daw.org is where you need to go for more details. And the very last DAW is Willow Software Anvil Studio. Not sure if we should include this anymore, but maybe in future editions we don't. It is a Windows freeware. It's a very outdated 1990s kind of design with limited features, and the product hasn't been updated, it appears, in many years. And you purchase accessories to get all the features. And a full Anvil Studio works is uh, $99. So anvilstudio.com. 
So that's all the DAWs, all 39. If you know of any other DAWs we missed, go ahead and put those into the comments. And again, if you send us an email to OHLR Music, we will be happy to send you the full presentation slides as a handy reference. And really appreciate you listening to the video. Please hit the like button. And uh, thanks again for watching.